Good morning, Gladys. Good morning. Hello, oh. Prime Minister. How are you at the Essex Heights Primary School? I can see you all there. You're looking, you're looking splendid. It looks like you're in the library. Is that right? Is that right, Mr. Perini? Yes, that's right, Mr. Prime Minister. That's wonderful. Well, how is it down there? It's raining up here in Canberra today. Is it? What's it like down there in Melbourne? It is raining here too. Right. Well, that's that's good for the farmers, isn't it? It's uh, they've had a tough time, our farmers. I, I'm sure you've been learning all about that uh, in school and uh, in through your lessons and and picking it up from here and there. So you know, the rain's a good thing, and um, it's great to see you too, Gladys. And and congratulations to the boys and girls for. What's been a really tough year this year for all of you? Um, getting through school, lots of lockdowns in, in Melbourne, um, homeschooling with your with your families. Um, that must have been incredibly tough. I know when my girls were doing it um, earlier in the year, um, you know, it was it was a different way of doing things. And I'm pleased that they're back at school now because the best place to learn is always in the classroom with your teachers and with your friends and having access to all of those resources. So I'm so pleased to see you all back at school, which is tremendous. And I'm keen to answer any of your questions that you have. And and uh, I, I hear, Gladys, that we've got the mathematics garden underway at the school. That's being built. That's exciting. I'd love to hear about the mathematics garden and what you think about that and, and how that's going to work and, and uh, help you with all your maths. But I bet you're also looking forward to Christmas, everyone. It's not that far to go now. And hopefully you'll have as normal a Christmas as possible down there in Melbourne. So I just want to thank you, all your teachers as well. Um, for the great job they've done this year in supporting you and getting through what has been a very difficult year. But I really want to say thanks to the boys and girls. You've, um, you know, you've just got through it and it's been tough. It's, you know, next year, hopefully, um, I'm quite confident things are going to be very different and we can just sort of get back, hopefully, to, to things as normal. Uh, but there's still a bit more work to do yet. So congratulations. And let's, why don't we go to some questions, Gladys? Well, well, before we get to the questions, um, I just want to say a big thank you to you, Prime Minister. Um, yeah. I know you are very, very busy and uh, to get some time from your very busy schedule uh, to have your time to meet with uh, the the boys and girls from uh, my electorate of Chisholm, uh, especially from Essex Heights Primary School, it is fantastic. Um, you actually show us a very good example how you can uh, best use your time because we understand you are now in quarantine, you can't go out and do work. However, when you can't go out, you make the time to meet with boys and girls uh, through Zoom. So thank you very much. That is very important. When you can't go out, doesn't mean that you can't do anything. You can actually achieve a lot while you are at home or at school. So um, I also want to introduce uh, Essex Heights to you because yeah. uh, I have been to Essex Heights a few times and I am thoroughly impressed by the school, the principal, the staff, the students, uh, and also the, the, the families. Um, I can tell you the school sees education um, as a partnership between children, staff, parents, and the local community. And I, when I went to visit um, Essex Heights, um, the very impressive thing was not only they are good with what they do, they put in 100% in what they do. On top of that, I can see the love and care from the staff, the school, to all the students. Not only the current students, but also past students. When I was there doing my school tour, I saw a past student came in. He was um, in a wheelchair, um, and it wasn't just for an accident. He, um, he has a disability. He needed that uh, to move around. And for him to come back to visit the school, and welcomed by the school and that shows um, the love and care the school has been given to this particular student and i'm sure to other students too so that scene that actually has been in my memory the whole time so that's why Good. i thought um, today you have time so i want to introduce essex highs to you and time for the students to ask you some questions that'd be great so we've got Jada there. Is Jada there? Yes. Jada and Mike, Aditi and Thomas. You're the class captains. That's what I understand. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. I am Jada and this is Michael. We are two of the school captains. We are delighted to have the chance to speak to you today. It is an honour. We acknowledge that this is such a big opportunity and we are so thankful for your time. We feel very lucky at Essex Heights to be able to meet you. Some of our students have prepared questions and we look forward to getting to know you. Great, well, let's, let's get into the questions. George, are you going to lead that or? No, they're all ready to go. They're a very organised group. Ready to go, Mr. Prime Minister. Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. Are there things that you can't do now that you could do before you became Prime Minister? Well, you mean specifically now that I'm in isolation or before? Because um, I suppose the answer is pretty similar. See, when you're Prime no. Minister, you've got to be able to... Um, you live in a secure house and you have all those sort of restrictions on you and going out to get a pizza or um, doing things like that or going down the beach where, you know, where I, where I grew up and, and where we, we lived before I became Prime Minister, that all becomes a bit more difficult, but you try and keep things as, as, as normal as you can. Um, our family spends as much time together as we possibly can. And sadly, at the moment, I can't see them because I'm down here in isolation in Canberra. They're up in Sydney. The girls are still going to school, of course, because there's a few more weeks to run, but I get to talk to them each day and we FaceTime, just like I'm sure when, if your parents are away or traveling, you get to FaceTime with them as well. So there's a there are a few changes, but the best part of the job I find is to get out and meet a lot of people and find out how things are working out on the ground. Um, both COVID this year and, and of course isolation now sort of prevents me doing that as much as I'd like. But I was down in Melbourne last Monday, actually, which was great. I really enjoyed that, um, getting out to see a lot of people and see how things were going in Melbourne after the big lockdown. So, yeah, there's a few things that change. But, um, you know, we try and keep as much the same as we possibly can, particularly as a family. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Prime Minister. I'm Connor. Hey, Connor. If general people protest against one of the decisions made by your government, what is the process to fix it? Oh, it's called the parliament. It's called the, the, the way we work policy out as a government. We have a lot of consultation and everyone has the right to peacefully protest in this country and, and people do it pretty regularly. You know, one of the things about this country is, is having that freedom. A lot of countries where well, you don't have that freedom and you don't have the, the, the right to say what you think and, and to be able to go and put your view forward. But the way we resolve those issues in this country is, is by working through members of parliament um, who are elected by the people to ensure that we can come to the best possible decisions. That's why we have elections. That's why we have consultations. That's why we have hearings. That's why you'll see Gladys on so many occasions as she does in her community going out and listening to the views of people in her community. And she gets on the phone to me and she tells me uh, what people think. Uh, as well as what she thinks. And that's the best way for a democracy to run. You know, you boys and girls, are, we all are. I grew, I grew up in Australia as well and born here. In fact, my family goes back to the first fleet, which was a long time ago in Sydney. And uh, we're very fortunate to live in a country where we can um, express our views. And that's why even with people disagree with us and people disagree with me um, every now and then, uh, sometimes a bit more often than not, but the point is, is, everyone has a right to have their say in this country. And we have our disagreements respectfully and we listen to each other and, uh, and we try our best uh, to be respectful. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Well, just to let you know about Prime Minister, Essex High School is a very multicultural school. They have uh, students coming from 25 countries. So uh, what you just told uh, the students is very, very important. We. Um, uh, including myself, being a migrant, yeah. we have chosen to come to this country because this country gives us the freedom of speech. It has democracy, and that is something we we treasure and uh, we re really respect. Never take it for granted. Yes. Yeah. Now, who have we got there? Mr. Prime Minister, my yeah. name is Nandita. What is the best thing about being the leader of a being the leader of a country? Well, the best thing you know is you have an opportunity every single day to make decisions that help people. And the best actual thing about the job is I get to meet so many different people. I meet Australians all across the country. I'm meeting you today and enjoying that. 
but I, I talk to people from the top of Cape York in Queensland over to you know the west coast in Western Australia, down in Tasmania, people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, um, all different stories, and they all make up who Australia is. And the best part of my job is I probably get a view of Australia which is far more broad than most because I get to meet so many. The best thing about being Prime Minister is when I suppose is that when you want to talk to someone, they're very happy to talk to you. And that means that you, you can learn a lot. Thank you. I feel a bit like that too. Well, when I want to talk to someone and listen to people, they'll be very happy to do that with me. True. Here we go. Minister, my name is Rafiq, and how has taking on the role of Prime Minister affected your life as you know it before? Well, thanks, Rafiq. Well, it's a bit similar to the first question we had. And there are a few changes that you have to make uh, for security and, and how you can move around the country and and sometimes that can keep you a bit separate from people. Um, one of the things you've got to work at really hard um, if you're in a busy job is you've got to remember the important relationships in your life. Uh, my family is incredibly important to me. Uh, the friends that I've had since I was, you know, at, at high school and university and things like that who have been lifelong friends. Um, Jenny, my wife and I, we work hard at keeping in contact with our friends. Um, can't do it with everyone we've always known because the job is very demanding. But that said, we you've got to work hard at keeping your relationships. It doesn't matter what job you have. The relationships you have with your family and your friends and, and those in your community are the most important thing. So we work hard at that. It's a bit harder to do in this job than it normally is. Um, but uh, that said, it's just as important because when, when you're going through difficult times as we've had this year, I, like anyone else, I, I draw on my friends and and my family for support. And uh, and Jenny and I go to a wonderful church in Sydney uh, together with our two daughters. And they're a tremendous support to us. And we try hard to remain very connected to our faith community as well. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. My name is Anastasia. What is the hardest thing in your position as Prime Minister? Well, it's a very good question. and, and uh, and each day presents a, a different uh, form of, of what that greatest challenge is. I mean, as, as Prime Minister, you can't make everybody happy all the time. And you just have to make choices that you think are in the best interest of the country as a whole. And that means sometimes people will disagree with you and they'll wish you did something differently or they wish you did it better or, or took, it, took a different path. But at the end of the day, you just have to take as much advice, um, inform yourself as much as you can, have uh, clear beliefs and values that help guide your own decisions. And at the end of the day, you just got to make a choice. Uh, being prime minister is largely about making decisions in, the, in, in our country's interests every day. And uh, that's, it's its greatest opportunity, but it's also its greatest challenge. Thank you. And I can tell you, boys and girls, uh, the good thing about um, Prime Minister Scott Morrison is he listens. So um, when you tell me something, I will go and tell him. What's the rule? Two ears, one mouth. That's the proportions in which we should use them. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. My name is Maria, and why did you want to become a Prime Minister? Was someone in your family in politics, or was there someone or some event that inspired you to get into politics? Well, yeah, we look, everyone who finds their way into politics sometimes comes in, that we come to it from very many different channels. And I'm glad it's a story would be different to mine and, and as mine will be different to many other members of parliament. Uh, in my case, um, it was my father. My father was a local mayor in the local council when I was growing up. And uh, he was also a policeman. And he was very active in his local community, um, particularly through his church community. He ran youth organisations. So my mother and father were very busy working in the community. And they always taught me um, life is is, is not about what you can accumulate, it's, a, it's about what you contribute. And we all have a responsibility to do that in whatever field we choose to work in or, or what we do, whether as a parent, um, whether we're the coach of the local soccer team or um, we're the local mayor or the police officer or the nurse um, or running a local business which supports and employs a lot of people. Um, that life is about what we contribute. And that's what my father taught me as a local mayor. And because he was so busy, I. 
I, I used to relish the time we could spend together. And often that was helping him out with his campaigns and various things for his local council elections. And we used to spend a lot of time together. So I got a bit of an insight into how my dad was able to help a lot of people. And I thought that sounds like a pretty good thing to do. Thank you. I, and I totally agree. Yeah, helping people is something that um, we have the privilege of doing now, don't we? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. The responsibility of being Prime Minister must be overwhelming at times. Do you ever feel the need to take a break from work? <laughs> well, when, when they present themselves to have a break, of course, you know, you've got to, doesn't matter what job you do, you've always got to try and keep yourself healthy. Because if you're not healthy, you can't do your best. And it's important to be physically healthy. And it's also important to be mentally healthy. And I know this year through the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, people's mental health, but including for young children as well, have been really affected. And that's why one of the decisions we made was to ensure we met really increase the amount of support and resources, things like Kids Helpline and other programs that can help people with their mental health. So, you know, you've got to take your moments. I do a lot of things to try and, um, you know, refresh, I obviously spend time with my, my family. Uh, I like to cook. I like to cook curries, actually. I've got pretty good up at it over the years. And uh, while I'm in isolation, I'll have to cook some of my staff who are here working me a, a curry or two. Um, I love doing that and the family loves that and trying to exercise. I'll show you, actually. Here we are at the lodge. And for the isolation, let me see if I can work this properly. I might get Adam to open that door behind <laughs> you. I could take you out there. It's a bit hard to do. Here we go. So we're going outside here at the lodge in Canberra. And I'm trying not to fall over. And here is the exercise bike. I think it's I can't get that right. There we go. We've got the exercise bike there, and I try and use that to stay a bit fit while I'm here. Mr. Frydenberg, who's the treasurer, he had to go into isolation too when he came up from Victoria to go to the parliament, and Gladys knows all about that. He told me it was a good idea to get an exercise bike. So you try and do all of these things to stay fit and healthy, and that's how you make the best decisions. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. It's nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. What was your job before being Prime Minister and do you miss doing it and why? Uh, before I was in tourism, uh, in politics, I, I used to work in the tourism industry and I, I worked in the property industry as well. And uh, I used to love working in both of those industries. I used to love working in the tourism industry because there were so many small and medium-sized business operators who were just so passionate about what they did and that's why through this pandemic, it's been really hard to see them go through such difficult times. I mean, Australia is just the most amazing place. And it's not just the incredible um, physical and environmental features of our country, which makes it special. It's the people. And uh, as Gladys said, we are the most successful immigration multicultural country in the world. In the world, no one has a society like Australia's and it could always be more perfect. It could always be better. We could always be more tolerant and more appreciative and respectful of each other and the many backgrounds we come from. There's no doubt about that. But I can tell you, Australia does it better than anywhere else in the world. And uh, when I worked in tourism, I got to see that all around the country. Um, and and I, was, I, I love the passion of the people who used to run all those tourism businesses and just love the idea of taking people from other states and other parts of the world and just showing them how special Australia was and seeing how it impacted them. I, I saw that on so many occasions and um, Australia is amazing and uh, the tourism industry gets to showcase it to the world and uh, to the rest of Australia for us. Thank you. And I know many tourists, well, after they have come and visited Australia, they made the decision of coming here too. I do. That's like the students, which was you, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> you came as a student and then you stayed. And uh, right. I'm more grateful you did. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, my name is Bailey. Uh, how has COVID-19 affected your year as Prime Minister? Oh, look, 
very good question and and my experience would be pretty similar to a lot of other Australians. I mean, I had to stay in the one place. And usually as a as prime minister, I travel a lot. I, I like getting around the whole country and seeing people and sitting down with them in their homes or, you know, at, at community events or tape, you know, or organisations and, and understanding what the issues are on the ground. Uh, but uh, when COVID hit, I had to stay put. Um, and so my family and I moved down here to Canberra for the first wave of COVID. And I even brought my mother and mother-in-law down with me. Um, so that was the house was pretty full uh, for our first several months. And I just worked out of here and at Parliament House, which is just down the road, whereas normally I'd move around a lot and I would have normally been in Sydney a lot, um, which is my hometown. Um, but alas, it meant being in a lot of windowless rooms, looking at screens with lots of technology. Um, one of the things that I also couldn't do is I couldn't travel overseas to meet with other international leaders. In the last three nights, in fact, I've had some very late nights till about two o'clock in the morning because we've been meeting with all the leaders of what's called the G20 countries, which are the tw world's 20 largest um, uh, country, uh, economies in the world. So the president of France and um, the chancellor of Germany and the prime minister of the United Kingdom and the president of China. Uh, we've all been on the, on the Zoom calls of a sort over the last couple of nights talking about important issues like how we respond to COVID and uh, get the vaccines out to not just the, the advanced economies, but also the developing countries around the world, but also how we deal with the world's big environmental challenges like oceans and plastics and climate change. That's been a big discussion. So I'd normally travel overseas a lot um, to meet with them and do those things. This year we couldn't. So we've done a lot more of it just over the phone and um, also over the, uh, um, the video calls where there's been a lot of video diplomacy this year and it, it's worked out pretty well, but I'm looking forward to those face-to-face -face meetings are also very good. Thank you. Well, even with a late night, you still get up early and start working again this morning, Prime Minister. Well, that's, that's true. But, you know, for people who run small businesses or work as nurses in hospitals and do shift work or, you know, they, everybody has difficult jobs. They've just got different titles. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. My name is Easy. What do you think about the way other Australian states have handled the response to COVID-19, in particular our state of Victoria? Well, it was over 100 years ago, Australia, in, as we know it today, didn't exist. What Australia was, was a bunch of separate states. There was Victoria and New South Wales and Western Australia, and there was no Australian government. There was no Commonwealth government. And so what happened is there was a, a number of people who decided that it was time to form this nation of Australia called the Commonwealth of Australia. There's people like Henry Parks and Alfred Deakin and a whole bunch of others, largely old men with very long beards, a bit different to today. Um, but they were amazing people and they formed Australia. But one of the things they did, and this is important, boys and girls, they said, look, we want Australia to all come together and have common um, uh, ways of managing important things like how we defend the, the country if we're ever under attack or how we trade with other countries and deal with other countries. We need to do that. But we also know that Australia is a really big country. It's huge. It's massive. And so Victoria is very different to the Northern Territory, which is different to Perth and Western Australia and Queensland and New South Wales and Tasmania. So they wanted to keep the government as close to the local people as possible. And so they wanted to keep the states. And so what they said was to the Commonwealth government, you can do a whole bunch of things, but everything else we're going to keep doing as states. And Victoria, um, of course, is one of those states and they're, they're responsible for public health. So your health, they run the hospitals and they run the schools and they run the police stations and all of these things. And so as the prime minister, it's my job and what the, what's called the constitution to ensure that I respect the, de the decisions that the premiers take and their governments take because they were elected just like my government was elected. And the way that Australia works is by respecting each other and the roles we each have. So my job has been to try and bring the premiers and the chief ministers and the states and territories together as much as possible. 
but there will always be differences. And the important thing about those differences is that each Premier is elected in their own state and they're accountable to the people, just like I'm accountable to the people right across the country. So it's my job just to help and support them. I think Australia has done better than almost any other country in the world when it comes to dealing with COVID-19 and the economic impact on people's jobs and their livelihoods. And a very important part of that is, has been the great work done by our state governments working together with me as Prime Minister and, and, and my ministers. So I, I think Australia's done really well. And I think all of the premiers have worked hard to get that result as well. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Prime Minister. My name is Jasmine. I'd just like to talk about the maths garden. The maths garden is part of what we call learnscapes. Learnscapes are areas where students can learn and play. The community of teachers and students were consulted, and as a result, the maths garden began to develop. Last year, six year five and six students undertook the task of planning and designing the garden as a as part of a, an enrichment mathematical program. We worked with engineers and teachers to measure their area and plan the proposed math garden. It was designed for students to enjoy and explore mathematics in a fun, hands-on way. So tell me, what it, um, so what are you looking forward to doing at the maths garden? What are some of the things in there that you're looking forward to doing? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone play in it. Obviously, I won't get to do that this year. Yeah. Think. But With seeing, so much, go on. Uh, seeing other year levels um, enjoy it would be nice. Yeah. It's so much easier to learn when you do it in a, in a in a fun place like that. I remember when I was a kid, um, you know, our lessons were probably not as interactive and and fun as the lessons you have today. We just worked off the book, and but I tell you, on maths, the one thing I used to like is we used to have to do our times tables and you had the competitions and you had the, the, the matrix and the numbers down each side and you had to do the multiplication be on both sides and we used to have all these sorts of competitions to see who could finish first. That was a bit fun, but um, it, it's great whether it's science or maths or, or any of these things. It's so good to learn in an environment which is fun. You remember it much more, I reckon. So congratulations on the math garden. And we're so pleased that we're able to put um, it was $20,000, I think it was, uh, wasn't it, Gladys? And well done yep. for putting the school that way. That's tremendous. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister, and my name is Ron. So I think you've already seen this panel right over here, which yeah. is shop. So this can be used when students play during recess and lunch. So they can pretend to be cashiers and customers so they can learn how to pay money and get the exchange, mm. the change. And I heard that you wanted to hear about the state of our math garden right now. Yes, please. So, so far we have been able to secure all the items needed for our maths garden. Now that restrictions have been eased, we are only waiting for contractors to install those items within the next few weeks. Well, that's great. Well, we're looking forward to that. Hey, one of the other things that has changed during COVID is now people don't use money as much. Um, and they had to do that because they had to stop people touching money and passing it to each other because that's how the virus could move from one person to another. But uh, that's going to change how shops work and everything, that people will be using more their phones to tap, to pay for money and uh, pay for things, and not just at, at big shops, uh, like Myers and others, but uh, at, at stalls on and weekend markets and all of that. And so that's going to be a big change. I mean, when I went to school, we used to have two cent and one cent coins and these sorts of things. We don't need those anymore. And uh, there's going to be a lot more change uh, in the future with how we how we pay for things. But Thank one you. thing that uh, has one thing hasn't changed, and that is uh, friendliness. If you serve people or if you want ser to be served, friendliness and a smile on your face will help. And uh, I think 
in Victoria, we uh, had been asked to wear face masks. And yes. now that we can take away the face mask when we are outdoor and also we're in schools, the people actually appreciate more. And uh, today I was out um, doing work in the community and without the face mask, I can show my smile <laughs> and, uh, and people are doing the same to me. So this pandemic actually has brought us to appreciate something that we take it for granted and now we appreciate even more that's very true gladys thank you hello mr prime minister my name is maria capsalis i'm the year six coordinator nice to meet you um i realize that the time is coming to, to a close but we do have a few students who would like to respond perhaps to some questions about their remote learning and sure. if we can also have some time for a photo opportunity, that would be fantastic. That would be great. So. I want to see all your smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Jack. Would you, Mr. Prime Minister, would you have any questions for these children? There's a few yeah, students I, I, who are ready to respond to any questions. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Um, look, I, I, I would like to know how you got on with your remote learning this year. What did you find worked really well for you? And, and what, what did you find a bit more difficult? I found what was difficult was not being able to socialise as much mm. for remote learning. And mm. what's good about remote learning is you always had access to food. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. I am Caitlin. I think it just dropped out then for a second. But tell me, how how was your experience? What how was it like with um at home um and with your family as as you were having to go to school each day? I suppose it um it was good. You only had to get from your bedroom to your computer. But uh, how did you go at home with everybody in the house while you were trying to do your schoolwork? It was pretty hard because sometimes we had meetings at the same time. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 I'm sure for not everyone would be in a big house necessarily. Everybody be in different houses and units and various other things. So, would have would have got would have got a bit crowded there from time to time, which could make it hard. Anyway, next year's going to be a lot better. Who have we got here? Uh, hello, Mr. Prime Minister. My name is Gabriel. So, Gabriel, what did you find um, on remote learning? What subjects were did you find the, the best to do with remote learning that you found there was the, the, the smallest change from how you might do it in the classroom? Um, I, th I think that writing is pretty is pre pretty much the same as yeah. everyone has an exercise book and occasionally you might have to use computer. Mm. And maths would be a bit of the same where you have to still write things in your exercise book. <laughs> yeah. But things like science and things like that would be a bit harder and because they do the coolest experiments with science these days with kids. Um, that's lots of fun. And, you you know, you can watch it on the video, but much better to actually see it and um, uh, right in front of you or things like geography and where you can sort of go out and look at the rock platforms or the, the rivers and things like that. Much better to see it up close. I find I learn a lot more when I can go and see it for myself. Thank you. Very good. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. My name is Hayden. Very good. So tell me about your experience with remote learning. How did you find it? Well, I personally found remote learning quite fun. Uh, it was the school was quite the same and the work. The only thing that I didn't enjoy was not being able to see my friends and teachers. Yeah. Well, it must be great back, back being back together again. And uh, yeah getting out and playing handball at, 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 at what we used to call little lunch and, and big lunch um, back then and playing together in the in the uh, in the playground that must be great thank you good on you good afternoon mr prime minister my name is daniel hey daniel so what's what's been the best thing about getting back into school for you i'm getting back uh, you get to see all your friends, that's the obvious one. But also, you know, just in remote learning, mm. feedback is very hard to get and you have to send an email, which could take uh, several hours to uh, for a teacher to respond. 
And how did you stay in touch with your friends um, while you were in lockdown? How, how did that all go? Through texting and the group chats. Yeah. Not quite the same, but and nevertheless, it's good to stay in contact and support each other. I had, a, I had a friend of mine send me a text last night. He knew I was in isolation, so he just sent me a text to see how I was doing. He was someone I went to university with, so that's nice. We all got to look after each other. I said at the start of the pandemic, we're going to get through it together, and that's exactly what Australians have done, and you boys and girls have been no different. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello again, Mr. Prime Minister. May I take hello. this opportunity to, to um, perhaps have a photo opportunity so the children have got their cameras? Would that be okay if we just spend a moment just clicking away? <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Your opportunity, guys, to take a photo. Great stuff. Now I'm going to take one of you. <laughs> How do I do this up myself? There we go. There we go. I just want to, on behalf, ah, the student is going to do it. So, okay, I leave you Wonderful. to do the honour. Mr. Prime Minister, my name is Adili and this is Thomas. We are two of the other school captains. We thank you so much for your time. We know you that you are a very busy man and we really enjoy learning more about you and your story. For a year that has been very challenging, this is definitely a huge highlight for all year six students at Essex Heights. So thank you very much. Well, it's been a highlight for me too, boys and girls. It's wonderful to come and visit with you today. I hope you have a, a great last few weeks at school, all being together. I know you've been looking forward to that, but I really hope you have a, a wonderful holiday break uh, and come back. You know, next year's going to be so much better. Who thinks 2021 is going to be so much better? Let me see your hands. It's going to be so much better in 2021. We're looking forward to that. That is going to be a great year. Australia's done so well and you've helped us achieve that this year so all the best for christmas and, and the holidays and new year and and uh, maybe i'll get down and see that maths garden next year who knows thank you thank you, thank you. that yeah. would be great thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. and thank you all boys and girls bye-bye